All right, let's move on to um, some useful functions. So there's the flatten function. The flatten function is useful for removing braces. So you saw that when we had multiple table pieces here, that when we let x go from 0 to 2 and y go from 0 to 2, now there's braces. If we had a z as well, right? So if we wanted to create this and make this z goes from 0 to 2, well, now we're letting x go from 0 to 2, y go from 0 to 2, z go from 0 to 2. Might as well put that in there here too. Now we've got all coordinates of size 3 that have zeros, ones, and twos. Um, this is kind of getting out of control. There's lots and lots of braces. Uh, so if you want to get rid of all braces, you use the flatten command, and it just gets rid of all the extra nested braces. Um, now, like in before, if we wanted to create some set of coordinates, uh, you might not want to get rid of all of the braces. Right? We wanted this to be 1, 1, 1, 2. We wanted maybe the list of all coordinates so that we could do something with it. Well, if you want to do that, you can use an optional second argument. So we say coordinates equals flatten of list 2, comma 1. This removes one set of braces. So that's a useful thing to do with flatten. All right, so maybe I'll we'll put that in a set of notes. Um, flatten, flatten, oh, why is it doing that? Not sure. I'll, I'll scroll down. Flatten is used to remove nested braces. And uh, use the second argument to uh, remove only some of the braces. All right, so the re we might want to do that because maybe we want to graph those 15 points, and you kind of want the point, this, this function, to apply to each of the individual ones and not to all of them, and not to a list of lists. All right, so let's just test what we've got here. Um, if we wanted to flatten all of these and we want to get rid of all the nested braces, well, every, all those extra nested braces go away and we get uh, one, two, three, four. That's going to be what flatten does. Uh, what about if we wanted to only get rid of one set of braces? Well, we need to put in that extra argument, this comma one, and that's going to get rid of this first set of braces out here. If we put in a 2, it would get rid of two sets of braces. Um, and 3 is going to give us exactly the same thing as before because there's only three sets of nested braces. Um, we can talk about joining two lists. So here's two lists, A, B, C, 1, 2, 3. And if we use the join command, it puts them together. That's a useful thing to be able to do. So um, what if we have an example here? What if we wanted the list of the first 10 positive even numbers and the first 10 positive odd numbers? To do that, we have to, uh, we have to create a list of evens. Oops. Create a list of evens. And we'll call so we could just write it out, right? We could do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or right, two, two, four, six, eight. But let's be a little smart about that. What we want is we want two times i, where i goes from uh, one to ten. And that's going to give us our list of even numbers. And let's create a list of odds table. 2 times i, and now is it going to be 2 times i plus 1 or 2 times i minus 1? If we did 2 times i plus 1, where i goes from 1 to 10, then that's not going to work. We can either change the i index to go from 0 to 9, or we can make this 2 times i minus 1. And now we can use the join command and we can join evens and odds. Boom, there we are. 
first 10 positive even numbers and the far first 10 positive odd numbers. Um, another way to modify a list is that we can uh, add an element to the end of the list. So we can use append. If we want to add an element to the beginning, we use prepend. So um, powers of 10, here's our list similar to above, where we have the, the first, well, we have power 10 to the 0, 10 to the 1, 10 to the 2, 10 to the, sorry, 10 to the 3, 10 to the 4, 10 to the 5. And if we want, we can add an element to the end. Maybe we wanted to put 10 to the 6th at the end, and we use the append command. Um, realize that when you use append, it doesn't actually redefine powers of 10. This is a list, append of powers of 10, comma 10 to the 6th, is the result of what happens when you put 10 to the 6 at the end of powers of 10. It does not modify powers of 10. Similarly, prepend, if we wanted to put 10 to the negative 1 as the first power, well, powers of 10 hasn't changed. Uh, if you want to, uh, to redefine it, what you can do is you can do this. You can either say, well, I wanted to put powers of 10 and I want to put 10 to the 6th at the end. Well, you can redefine powers of 10 in that way. Alternatively, there's a modified version of append and prepend. It's called append2 and prepend2, and that redefines the function. So prepend2, powers of 10, 10 to the negative 1, and if we type in powers of 10, that's going to, it will have changed it. So let's do a quick, um, uh, let's, let's look at a, a quick example. So what will the following command do? Here we have append, and we have a list, and we have 5 comma 6. All right, and I think about, think, in, think for yourself, what do you think this is going to do? All right, and now let's evaluate it. And it's probably not what you thought it was going to do. Um, realize that append always puts one thing into the list. And in this example, the one thing is the list 5, 6. So what we have is we have the list 1, 2, 3, 4, and then the last entry is the element 5, 6. So how do you fix this? You fix this instead of using append, you could use join, right? That would be one thing you would do. Another thing you could do is you could use flatten. Right, so we could take this, if you really wanted the list, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, you could take this and we could do flatten, oops, append, uh, let's get my, let's, so we could either use join, or we can use flatten of this. All right, and so... I think this is the last. The last thing you might we might want to just we're going to discuss today is if we want to access parts of the list. So let's say we wanted to figure out. So we have a list of things. Um, here is a list of the first 100 prime numbers. Uh, that's using this function prime sub prime of n, which takes the nth value of the, the nth prime number. So now we have a list, but maybe we wanted to know what is the 40th entry of this list. So in this case, it's what's the 40th prime number. So to do that, we could, we'll use this double bracket notation. So this one, so accessing parts of lists puts lots of brackets everywhere. Um, and this doesn't mean apply a function, this means take the element number 40 from the list. So primes of 40, the 40th prime number is 173, which we could have figured out by just doing prime of 1 of 40. It should also be 173, but this is an example of how you access the part of the list. This double bracket notation is a shorthand for the part function. 
So the part function, this is equivalent. Part of primes comma 40 takes the 40th entry, 40th part of the primes list. So um, if you have a list and you want to take a part of it, but the list is a um, the list is a nested list. If we were to take the second part of this, then it's asking what's the second thing in the list? And in this case, it is three comma four. It's a list itself. And that's what is the second and second object in the list. Um, so if you want to, you can access parts of inside parts of list. If we wanted to access what this three is, well, we could have done this. We could have said nested list of two, and then now we have a new thing, nested list part one of nested list part two, and that would get it. But when you're doing, when you have this nested list, you can use something that looks like this, where you specify we want the second part and we want the first part of that. And let's look at a much more complicated example. This is a very, very deep list where it's nested like five sets of braces around everything. So let's say we wanted the second part of this list. It's the second half here. And if we wanted the second part of that, that's going to give us the second part of this. And if we want the first part of that one, that's going to give us the first part of this list. If we want the second part of this, we get here, and if we want the first part of that list, then entry 2, 2, 1, 2, 1 of this original very, very deep list is alpha. So that's what happens if you want to access one part of a list uh, or an array. Um, to access multiple entries of a list, you can set, you can specify which ones you want. So if we want primes 3, 5, and 7, we can see that the 5th, the 11th, and the 17th entries of primes is the, uh, the sorry, the 3rd, 5th, and 7th entry of primes are the primes 5, 11, and 17. And let's say you wanted a sequence of things, not just 3, 5, and 7, but you wanted prime number 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. We can use our understanding of the range command to do that and say, oh, this is prime 3, prime 4, prime 5, prime 6, prime 7. The last thing that I'll mention today has to do with taking more, even more pieces. So let's look at an example here. This is a table, this is an example of a table command where it's x times y squared. So everything in the everything in the first column is of the form uh, x times, so everything, that's, let's do it in the first row, everything in the first row is 1 times y squared. So this is 1 times 1 squared, 1 times 2 squared, 1 times 3 squared, 1 times 4 squared, etc. Whereas everything in the first column is what happens when y is equal to 1. So that's 1 times 1 squared, 2 times 1 squared, 3 times 1 squared, 4 times 1 squared, etc. Right, normally what we see is we see this nested list structure. I use table form to look at this better. So let's say we wanted rows 3, 4, and 5 of this list rows 3, 4, and 5 of this list, but only columns 2, 4, and 8. Well, we can specify that. We can say the x, the x values that we want are the range are 3, 4, and 5, and the columns we want are 2, 4, and 8, and that's going to give us the subarray. So this is a submatrix of this matrix. Um, and if we wanted to choose the second entries of every row, or what the first column is, the second column is, we can use this all command. So what all does is you don't have to specify which entries you want, you just say I want them all. I want it all. Alright, and so products of all comma two 
give us everything in the, in the second column or the second entry of every row. And if we wanted the third entry of every column or the third row, we can use all in the second coordinate. All right. Um, thanks for following along. Ask any questions over on CampusWire. Take care.